I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, uh, take it away, Doctor. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, is brought to you this week by Roku. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust you're having a great time this week with all your electronic toys. I like my toys. I play with them all the time. <laughs> yes, and not the least of which is one that I'm looking at right now, which is the Microsoft LifeCam Studio that I'm using to use to do the show. Isn't that redundant? <laughs> at any rate, I have the two camera shots set up here so that I can look at this camera over here and then swing back and look at this camera over here. You say, Dr. Bill, that's not much of a difference between the two cameras. It's a small studio. What can I say? By the way, <laughs> well, it is. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Yes. And there's all kinds of good stuff out there on techpodcast.com. You really need to check it out. I was watching some of them this morning. This is a Saturday as I record this, and so I was watching this morning. I was watching Geek News Central with Todd Cochran, and I was watching all kinds of stuff. Robbie Ferguson from Canada on the uh, Category 5 TV show. All kinds of good stuff. So check it out. Good stuff out there. Okay, uh, lots of things to talk about this week. First thing I want to talk about is the new iTunes podcast app is actually here. Now, you remember a week or so ago I talked about the fact that iTunes was going to be taking podcasts out of iTunes, or Apple was going to be taking podcasts out of iTunes. And I was like, dude, I don't like that idea. And I still don't, exactly. But they do have a new app that is supposed to highlight the podcast. So maybe, maybe it's not so bad after all. We'll see. But at any rate, the new iTunes uh, podcast app, go check it out and be sure to subscribe to this show. DrBill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv as it says there on the screen. And of course, the handheldhack.com, which I'll also put up here on the screen, is another video netcast that we do. And yet another, of course, is Vertzine, V I R T I. V I R T Z I N E. Don't even know how to spell my own podcast. Vertzine, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, Fred. Never mind. Anyway, Fred, as you know, the Game Master, my son, Benjamin, who we call the Game Master, he named the dude that puts the text up on the screen after the show to make snide comments and remarks about what I'm saying, Fred, P-H-R-E-D, Fred. Yes. Sometimes I think Fred thinks it's his show, but it's not. <laughs> Don't tell Fred. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to have to do the show by myself. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, we have an awesome sponsor this week, and that is Roku. Roku is one of my favorite tech toys. Talking about tech toys, like we did the first of the netcast there. Boy, Roku is awesome. That's what I was watching all those netcasts I was talking about on, is on my Roku box. And right now... If you go to our website, drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv, click on the bright red box on the right-hand column side of the blog, and you'll find that you can order refurbished Rokus for even less than it says here for a brand new one. And that new price is awesome and includes free shipping. I'm telling you, Roku is a great deal. No monthly fees. You can see Netflix if you subscribe to it for a very low $8 a month. And uh, that's, of course, the Netflix fee, not the Roku fee. 
So I'd encourage you to check out Roku. You can get all kinds of free video programming with the Roku, not the least of which is techpodcast.com and blueberry.com through the Roku on their individual channels. So check it out and check out Roku. Google scientists... (laughs) Next item here. Google scientists have created a computer that finds cats on the internet. Now you may think to yourself, why do we need to find cats on the internet? I have a a picture here that I'll put up in the corner that says, that shows lime cat. Good old lime cat. Cat with a lime on his head. Looking slightly put upon. (laughs) Which I guess if my owner put a lime on my head, I'd look put upon too. Anyway, so cats, the whole idea here is, is they are working on computer intelligence. So of course they look for cats on the internet. Yeah. Anyway, the idea is, is they allow the computer to discover the concept of essential catness. And identify cats that are out there on the internet. Yes. I mean, not individual cats, like that one's Fred and George. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the concept of cat as opposed to dog or car or turtle. But I digress. The point is cats. I mean, we all know that's what the interwebs are for. Yes. So I thought that was pretty cool. Just the general coolness of that alone was worthwhile. All right, next item. Spray on batteries? Yes. <laughs> Scientists have come up with a way to spray layers of paint and create batteries so that your device is painted with a battery. How odd is that? You know, I put batteries in it, it's the paint job becomes the battery. Of course, we're at the early stages of this, but it has promise and might be weird. But anyway, I thought that was kind of odd. These are researchers at Rice University in Houston, Texas. They've come up with a technique to break down each element of the traditional battery and incorporate it into a liquid that can be spray painted in layers on virtually any surface. Pretty cool stuff. You know I like these sciencey odd things, yes? Oh! Yes, the drum will, of course, telling us it's time for a Geek Software of the Week. The Geek Software of the Week this week is fog. <laughs> I like fog. You know, I'm a cloud computing dude, and I always said before that if it's if it's a cloud that you keep internal to your own organization, that's the fog. Well, this is different. This is fog. But they're calling the software fog. It's actually the fog project. So the whole idea here is the ability to, you're familiar with the idea of ghosting a system. It's because Norton Ghost is the program that most people use for that. Well, in this case, you use this technology. It's basically a Linux server with a web server on it with PHP and some other tools and you pixie boot off the network and you can load an operating system from the file server the Linux box down to boxes on your network so for instance let's say you had an elementary school and you wanted to deploy a hundred computers all at one time well you could do it with fog (laughs) so it's pretty cool and it's free of course since it's totally open source you can also do things like if you have an image that came from a computer with a an 80 gig partition, you know what I'm saying? The original disk was 80 gig, but the computer you want to put it on is only a 40 gig drive. Well, normally you couldn't image that. But if the data portion of the 80 gig image is less than 40 gig, Fog will allow you to install it on that 40 gig drive and not get yourself in trouble. Yes. So that's kind of neat. And I can think of all kinds of neat applications for this. There may be people who want to have a computer lab and be able to immediately wipe it and start over that could use this. Or say churches maybe that want to have computers in their fellowship hall and want to deploy them all at once or who knows. All kinds of ideas 
that you can do with fog. <laughs> yes, I don't know. I just like that. I like saying fog. <laughs> I'm a little odd that way. Anyway, businesses and schools embrace Google applications. Now, you're familiar with Google Docs and, you know, Gmail and all those good things. Well, guess what? There are more and more businesses and universities that are switching to Google's applications for their base Office suite instead of using Microsoft Office. Now, that alone is a good thing. I'm for it. Yes. Google announced that Gmail now has 425 million users at its annual Google I.O. Developer Conference. It's being used by government agencies in 45 states, and 66 of the top 100 universities in the U.S. have already gone Google. Google also announced that over 5 million businesses have gone Google. This says Google includes a number of large companies, including Roche, Kalium, and others using Google Docs for their primary documentation and uh, word processing. Pretty neat stuff. And of course they now call it Google Drive. So you can store all your stuff and use all your apps through Google Drive. Pretty neat. Neat stuff. Alrighty, next item. Gmail, since we're talking googly things, this is a very googly podcast this week. Uh, Gmail has overtaken Hotmail in the largest email service category. So it used to be Hotmail was the largest email service in the world. And now, according to figures revealed in a post on Google's blog on this past Thursday, uh, Gmail, which was launched in 2004, has evolved from a simple email service to the primary mode of communication for more than 200 and, excuse me, 425 million active users globally wrote Google SVP for Chrome and Apps Sundar Pichal. Probably totally mispronounced his name, but hey. Anyway, so it's now number one mail provider in the world. Wow. Pretty neat stuff. So, that's kind of it for the show this week. Kind of short and to the point. But, here's the thing. I've got stuff that I want to do demos and things. We're going to be doing more of those in coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. Also, we've got some surprises coming in terms of guest appearances, more Game Master segments and things along that line, so stay tuned for that as well. There's going to be stuff happening, basically. So, remember until next time that the Doctor is out of here! Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.